when you feel um, alone, when you feel desperate, when you feel um, like nobody else understands, like nobody else is going through what you're going through, whatever you might be feeling, that Jesus has been there in some way, shape, or form. That Jesus came down uh, over 2,000 years ago to be born of the Virgin Mary. He was fully man and fully God, and he understands what it is to be and walk in our shoes, to feel uh, humanity, to feel human. And, and so we do serve a God who understands us, and you can speak to him, and you could talk to him, and you could tell him your needs because he gets us. And today, um, I, I want to talk about um, those of us, and, 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 and this may up front, and I just want to be really transparent, this may up front feel a little selfish, um, it, 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 kind of a selfish topic, and here's what I mean. If, if you've ever felt um, unappreciated, has anybody ever felt unappreciated? Let me just say that. Has anybody ever felt unappreciated? Like, like maybe parents, you, you work all day, right? And you, you clean the house and you wash clothes and you do all of these things. And, 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 and the people who live with you, right? Um, they may come home and, and maybe things are cleaner. Uh, they're, they're cooked, they're washed or whatever that might look like. And there's no acknowledgement that you did anything, right? And you're just like, Wow. If they only knew all the work that I did, right? If they only knew everything that I do. Has anybody been there? Has anybody been there? Or, or maybe at work. Maybe at work you, you, you're doing a great job. You went above and beyond. Your boss shows up or, or, or the people you're working for shows up and, and you did more than you ever did. You got more done than you've ever done. And there's no acknowledgement of that. And, and it's not that you do it for the acknowledgement, but it just feels good, right? And that's what I mean by kind of, it kind of feels selfish, but not really. Like there's something inside of us that wants to feel like we're acknowledged for what we do. Is that okay to say? Like, like, like we, like, good job. That was, it feels good to hear that. It feels good. And so I, I want to talk to those of you, and, and I would guess all of us to some extent, who give more, serve more, help more, and anyone who just goes above and beyond and, and you do it not because you want recognition, but because you love your family, because you love people. But there's just times where you wish uh, and you feel like unappreciated and, and unacknowledged. Uh, you, you want somebody to notice you, right? You want, you want in, in, in somebody to just say thank you, just to say thank you. And I don't know about you, but um, if you don't get any of that for, for a season, um, it could be discouraging. It could feel like, why am I even doing this? Why do I try so hard? Why do I do this? If nobody seems to care, if nobody uh, seems to acknowledge. But I, I want you to hear today's message because I guarantee you Jesus has been there and Jesus understands. Um, in Luke chapter 17, verse, verse 12 through 13, Scripture says, as Jesus entered uh, the, a village there, 10 men with leprosy stood at a distance, crying out, saying, uh, crying out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us, right? And there's these 10 lepers that, that Jesus sees, and they cry out to have mercy. And, and, and maybe you can relate, right? Um, you, you, uh, you have a need, right? And, and you're asking Christ, just like these, uh, the, these um, 10 lepers, right? And, and Jesus is there. And, and do we know the story, right? Do we know what happens in this, that Jesus, Jesus heals, right? He heals them. And, and you, um, and let's, let's, let's finish reading it. In Luke 17, verse 14, 14 through 17 and on, Jesus looked at them and said, check this out. Go show yourselves to the priests. As they went, they were cleansed from their what? Their leprosy. One of them, when they saw that he was healed, came back to Jesus shouting, praise to God. Praise God, rather. He fell to the ground at Jesus' feet, thanking him for what he had done. This man was a Samaritan. Jesus asked didn't I heal, didn't I heal 10 men? Where are the other nine, right? And, and so here, here you have Jesus again. This is, this is, we, we can, we could relate to this, especially, especially moms, right? You, you, you do something. He healed them. They all went to 
to go show themselves to the priest. They were all healed, but only one came back to say, to say thank you, right? Only one. And Jesus doesn't need this. Jesus is the savior of the world. Jesus has everything in his hands. He has all the power, right? He doesn't need somebody to say thank you, but he still said, wondered why. Why? Why is only one? Why is only one, right? And, and on a Mother's Day, I think about everything that, that moms do. Um, they're, they're so uh, amazing. Um, moms, uh, they, they, they cook. Uh, in some cases, they clean. In some cases, they're the Uber driver, depending on how old your kids are, right? Taking them everywhere. Moms could be the counselor. Moms could be the doctor. Moms could be the life coach. Moms can be the, the, the personal uh, uh, shopper, right? The referee, right? The, anybody, any referee moms, right? The, the defense attorney, right? The judge, and sometimes the executioner, right? <laughs> Depending on what's for dinner, right? So, I mean, there, there's moms are pretty amazing, right? Can we just give it up for moms one more time? Like moms are, moms are pretty amazing. And, and, and for moms who do all of these things day in and day out or, or different seasons, depending on, again, where you're at uh, in, in, your, in your life, you may be doing all of these. You may have some of these are in your past already and you did them before. But, but nevertheless, um, even Jesus said, hey, how come only one thank me? And, and moms, you can probably relate to that because nobody, nobody acknowledges all the stuff I do. Right? Nobody acknowledges all the work that I put in. Um, if they only knew, if they only knew. And again, it's not because you, you, uh, you, you, you're doing it for that reason, but it feels good to be acknowledged that you have done it, that you have done it. Um, when you um, spend hours on a meal, right? And the plates are empty, and no one said thank you, right? Has anybody been there? Um, how about when, when you're in traffic, right, and, and you um, let God guide you a little bit, and you let somebody in, right? And then they don't even do the, like, that's not even a thing anymore. Like, how, how many remember, like, it, it feels like that has gone away. Is, is it just me? Like when we grew up, come on, if you're, I'm, I'm, I grew up in the, I, I was born in 75, right? And I, and I got my license a long time ago. And I remember any time, any time somebody would let you in, it's, it's, it's acknowledging it. It's, it's, a, it's a head movement and it's a little wave. It's thank you for letting me in. Nobody cares anymore. That, it, that is, our, everything has changed, Right? And, and, and part of me wants to get mad because ah, I just let them in. They don't, you know, and then part of me is like, I guess that's just the way it is now. Just a little acknowledgement, right? Like all of these little things. And, and, and Jesus, again, he didn't heal the lepers for selfish reasons. He didn't heal them just to get the thank you. But even Jesus thought, thought and, and thought to himself, uh, they could have said, they could have all, why, why didn't they all come back in, in a heart of gratitude, right? That's, that's wild. So three, three things to remember when you feel on scene, when you feel on scene. Here, here's, here's, here we go. How they make you feel is not who you are, okay? Just, we need to remember that. It, how they make you feel is not who you are. The second thing, and we'll go through these one at a time here in a moment. Those you serve the most often appreciate you the least. Yikes. Ouch, Right? And the third, what is on scene, this is the most important thing. What is on scene by people is often what's most significant to who? To God. To God. So how they make you feel, let's go back to the first one, uh, is not who you are, right? Um, I, I could remember so many times, uh, and Jose is going to get mad at me for sharing some of these stories, right? But I remember we, we recently uh, went to New York, and, and we were celebrating my brother-in-law's uh, surprise engagement. And we went out there, and they took us to uh, with this bakery, and I think it was, I can't even remember, somebody famous had a bakery out there. And I had this blueberry muffin cookie, like it was a muffin cookie. It was like muffin, like just saying that together sounds like makes my mouth water, right? Uh, blueberry muffin cookie, 
I just want to keep saying that. But no, it was, it was so good. And I said, I got to bring one home to Jose because, you know, we're all about the sweets. The, we're like the sweets guys, right? So um, not always the sweetest, but we like sweets. No, we, um, so we, we package it up and it's looking at me the whole time, like on the way home. And I want to eat it. Have you ever been there? Like you just want, like, I don't, I, I don't know if this is going to make it home. Like, I feel like it's not going to make it home. Right, Anthony, you know what I'm talking about, man. Right. So we, it did make it home and we made it home. And it was it was it was a little bit later. And uh, I don't know if you've ever um, uh, uh, played any online games or whatever. But sometimes when you're in the middle of a game or a tournament, uh, you can't just exit the game because there are other gamers online depending on you to do your part. Right. That's right. So so we get home. And of course, mom wants to see uh, um, Mr. Jose. But Mr. Jose is feeling finishing a game right and we're like wow we just got home you know from out of town and 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 the game's still on right and, and so and and i'm like and i got a cookie here it's gonna be gone if he doesn't get down you know finally comes down and and then um i think more upset that we that we interrupted a game than the cookie and i'm like he didn't even say thank you for the cookie you know like it's a it's it's it's, it's all on fun he knows he knows we um but we 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 get it right uh but, but you, there are those times where you're like, you just want a little thank you. You want a little acknowledgement, right? Um, Jesus, uh, again, the same thing. Uh, how people made, two examples of how Jesus, uh, how people made Jesus feel uh, are in the same chapter. So there's another one in Luke chapter, now he's not going to show the scriptures, I bet. He's, no, I'm just kidding. Luke chapter 4, verse 15. <laughs> he knows I'm kidding. Uh, Jesus was teaching in their synagogues and everyone, what? praised him, right? So here, here is another example, right, of how people made Jesus feel. He's in the synagogue, and everybody's like, praise you, Jesus. You're, this, you're the Messiah, right? Jesus said, you're going, um, uh, you're, you're going to want me to do miracles like this elsewhere, right? And he explained uh, in verse 15 and verse 28 that prophets aren't honored in their own town. And then in that same chapter, a little bit later, verse 4 through 28, uh, or 28 through 4 in the same chapter 4, uh, he says, all the people in the synagogue were, what? Furious. Furious when they heard this. They got up, drove him out of town, and took him to the brow of the hill on which the town was built in order to throw him off the cliff. Like, hello, right? One moment, they're, they're praising Jesus, they're praising him in the same like instance, same chapter again, same, you know, sequence time of events. And then they're furious at him, wanting to throw him off a cliff. Like this is in, in, insane. It, it, this, this, this is crazy. We love you. We hate you. You're amazing. You stink. Like we're going to, you know, get rid of you. Like, have you ever felt those emotions? Like, it's crazy. Like you feel one moment acknowledged and the moment you feel not acknowledged that you're, but I, but I want to tell you this, that someone's inability to see your worth doesn't decrease your value. Okay. And I'm going to put this on the screen. Your value isn't determined by what others think of you, but by who God says you are. Can, can we, let me just read that again. Your value isn't determined by what others think of you, but by who God says you are. And we just sang a song at the end of worship that we are children of God, that we are declared children of God, that we are in his family, that we belong to him, that he loves us. And this is something that we can't forget, that God knew us before he formed us in our mother's womb, that he chose us, he set us apart, that he uh, called us, he forgave us, and by Jesus' uh, death and resurrection on the cross, he saved us, and he adopted us to be in the family of God, to be a joint heir in the kingdom of God, to be uh, the light of the world, to be an ambassador, to be an overcomer, and you are not who they say or who they think or who they make you feel like you are. You're, you're not. So how they make you feel is not who you are. The second thing is those you serve the most often appreciate you the least. How many would agree with that? 
right? Those you serve the most often appreciate you the least. And I don't think it's always intentional. I don't think that it's always something that, um, that our family wants to do. But for example, if, if you um, day in and day out c- cook or clean or, or, or give rides to or uh, whatever that looks like, um, maybe the first few times, like, thank you, thank you, thank you. And then after a while, it's just kind of automatic. Does that make sense? And, and the human side of us, the human nature uh, of us is that we just get used to it. And, and, and without thinking about it, it's almost like it's a um, not 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 deserved, but it's almost just a routine. And, and it becomes less acknowledged. So if you're here today and you're like, man, I haven't said thank you in a while. Like, I don't want you to feel bad. It, it's 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 that we we, we get a little de deprogrammed if you will and and we we don't we get desensitized to the day in and day out uh gifts that we give one another of service and maybe today if anything else maybe today if you're if you're on the other side of somebody always giving to you maybe you'll just kind of recalibrate and remember oh yeah i mean i i gotta start thanking my wife i gotta start thanking my kids i gotta start thanking my boss or whatever that is i have to start being better at acknowledging things that might be that side of it, too. Because, uh, again, those you serve the most often appreciate you the least. Um, in the Old Testament, uh, the Pharaoh got angry. Uh, he threw his cupbearer in prison. And the cupbearer um, had a dream, and Joseph interpreted this dream. If you, if you remember, one of these days we'll have to go through an in-depth study. Um, and and he said that the the dream meant that in three days the Pharaoh would restore him, uh, restore his role. And Joseph said this in in Genesis 40, verses 15 through 14 through 15. uh, Joseph told uh, uh, the cupbearer, and please remember me and do me a favor. When things go well for you, mention me to the Pharaoh so that he might let me out of this place, this prison. For I was kidnapped from my homeland, the land of the Hebrews, and now I'm here in prison, but I did nothing to deserve it. So he's like, I, I, you had this, there was this dream, I interpreted it, you, you, it came true, you're free, you're restored, would you do me a favor and acknowledge me to the Pharaoh would you tell him I was the one would you tell him I'm not I'm here uh, and and it's unjust would you tell him and in uh, Genesis 40 verse 23 Pharaoh's chief cupbearer however what he forgot all about Joseph never giving him another thought never acknowledging him never never thanking him never being grateful never mentioning him to, to, to the Pharaoh can you imagine that? Like, this is a crazy scenario here, right? And so those you serve the most often appreciate you the least. When you do a lot, of, lot for people, they aren't as, as likely to notice. I mean, think about it. Uh, for those of you who have had a job uh, in the same industry for, let's just say, five, ten years, you show up for work every day or every yeah monday through friday or whatever your work schedule is on time maybe you're an on-time person right or you even have margin in your time nobody is saying thank you right for showing up on time it's just kind of expected right it's just like this ingrained thing it, they they aren't likely to notice or maybe um when you're on vacation things don't go as well and when you get back they're like i'm man i'm grateful because you, we, we we really do miss you when you're gone like, there's no gratitude there. Um, and what's normal, I'll put this on the screen, isn't celebrated. It becomes expected. Does that, does that make sense? So after a while, what's normal um, isn't celebrated. It's, it's more of an expectation. Even though we should celebrate, you know, what we do for one another or what is accomplished or what is done. And, and so, um, so how do you know when you're good at something? And this is, this is something that, that we 
Um, it, I'm trying to help us understand this. How do we know when we're good at something uh, that we don't get acknowledged for or it becomes normal, not celebrated as it's expected? You, you know you're good at something, right, when you stop getting compliments. So again, showing up on, to work on time, incredible meals, keeping the house nice. Um, uh, uh, for somebody, uh, I, I remember years ago starting uh, messages and I had like 13 pages of notes and I was just like freaking out reading every word and I would say and God said da 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 and then God said da 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 like that now, now it's transitioned to I, I look at you more and just once in a while you know it, you get you get a little bit better and then you know I remember in, in the beginning oh, Joe you're doing so great and then all right and you're doing great and after a while it's all right gotta go you know it's um, except for art all art is always saying thank you for thank you art for no, I'm just kidding no no it, it uh, but it's just you know you get a little bit better when it becomes normal right this isn't as celebrated as much right and that's just normal it's a human nature I'm nobody's trying to make anybody feel guilty I'm just illustrating how we become a little it's it just like a routine after a while a routine and, and so um, in some weird way and let me let me put it this way in, in a weird way it's almost a compliment when people take you for granted in a weird way does that, does that make sense because they're so used to it, they so um, uh, uh, love what you do for them, or they so uh, expect it that, that um, they wouldn't be them, or their day wouldn't be their day without you, even though they don't acknowledge. Is, is, is that kind of, a, kind of a different way to think about it, right? It's almost a compliment, because they trust you, they depend on you, you're a faithful part of their life to some degree. So think of it that way. Think of it that way. That, that how they make you feel isn't who you are. Those who you serve the most often appreciate you the least. But here's soup. This is where I want to bring this home. And this really touched my heart when I was studying this. What's on scene by people is often what's most significant to God. What's on scene by people is often what's most significant to God. The, the world is opposite. Um, people want to celebrate what they see and not what they don't see. In other words, if you were to graduate, if you were to get a promotion, if you were to buy a car, if you were to buy a house, if you were to get married, if you were to have a, a quinceanera for your daughter, wh whatever that looks like, people want, they, they want to celebrate with you because they see it, right? But what if you were working on your character over the past couple years? What if you were working on your prayer life or, or you were working on on just being a better husband or a wife in, in, in your in your marriage and you were just really being intentional at home when nobody's around and you and your wife are talking and you're you're learning to be more patient, learning to listen more, learning to, to have better conversations. Nobody's saying, wow, like, look at that. Like nobody's celebrating that. But, but, but God sees that. God sees that. Because what we think is seen is significant, but, but God is, 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 it's the opposite. It's most often what's not seen that's significant to God. What's invisible, I'll put this on the screen, what's invisible is often what's most valuable. That's powerful. What's invisible is often what's most valuable. If you've felt overlooked or, or run down or, or, or not acknowledged, but yet you faithfully provide for your family, you faithfully serve God to the best of your ability, you faithfully pray, you faithfully uh, 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 are in tune with God to the best of your ability, I, the next time you pray, I, wa I want you to just say, God, thank you for, for giving me and sustaining me. Like, thank you for acknowledging that, God. Thank you for, like, I, I, maybe God I didn't recognize, or I, I don't even realize, God, that, that you've sustained me this whole time. And, and, and I want to tell you that God would tell you right now, 
that God, his word tells you right now, we're going to read it, that it's because you've been faithful. You haven't been perfect. No one's saying that. But you've been faithful. And maybe you just need to hear that today, that God acknowledges that you have been faithful. And that's why you are where you're at today. That's why you're here today. That's why you have what you have today. That's why you're still around. You've been faithful. Not perfect, but you haven't given up. Matthew 6, 1 and 2 says, Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it on Instagram. No, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by others. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. See, he's into just rewarding us for what we do, not because we want to be seen, not because we want the accolades and, and the praises of people, of our family, of our church, of, of, of whoever might see what we're doing. It's not about that. But God is faithfully sustaining you. He's taking care of other things in your life while you, while you serve him, while you serve your family, while you faithfully go to work every day. He's taking care of other things that you probably don't even realize. That he's keeping your kids safe, right? That, he, that he's providing through the hard work that you do income to, to support your family. And God sees when you get up early and you're doing the right thing and nobody else sees that. When you're nice to the person you don't even know or you give something to somebody you don't even know and nobody else saw it, God sees that. When you pray on your own in your car and just say, God, thank you for another day, or God, I, I need your help, or whatever, God sees that. Nobody needs, that. Nobody needs to see that. God sees that. When people don't notice, God notices. And, and this scripture right here, I'm going to end with this. Please listen to this scripture if you've zoned out, zoned back in just for a moment. Hebrews 6, 10, and 11. God is not unjust. Listen. God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown to him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. We want each of you to show this same diligence to the very end so that what you hope for may be fully realized. God is just. When you do the right thing, when you serve him to the best of your ability, when you give to the church, when you attend church, when you pray for the church, when you support one another, when you come to church, and, and, and we, as a church, we, we use our resources to, to help others, to continue to, to improve uh, and take care of the building that we have and reach out to the best of our ability. God sees that. He sees your sacrifice. He sees your time. He, he, he sees what you do. And it doesn't go on acknowledged because God is just. It doesn't go on seen because God is just. It doesn't go ignored because God is just. He's not unjust. He is a just God. And he sees what you do. So let that encourage you today. Let that encourage you. And again, on the flip side, if you need to be the encourager, and if you, if you feel like it's been a while since you've said thank you to somebody, maybe that's the reverse of this. That you say thank you to somebody that you haven't for a while, that serves you day in and day out. Can we pray? You know, Jesus, when he healed those lepers, only one came back. And I pray that today, Eternal Rock, that we would be like that one. We would come back and say, thank you, God. And so, Lord, we, we come before you, Father, and, and we thank you 
for your word. We thank you, Father, that uh, your inspired word, eternal word, Holy Spirit filled word never comes back void. And it always touches us. It always reaches us. And it never fails us, Father. We, we read scripture week after week, and it just seems like what we needed. And I pray, Lord, that for all the moms here that just needed to be encouraged, that needed just to be acknowledged, Father, for all their hard work, that, Lord, at the very least, you're acknowledging, Father. And for those of us, Father, again, any of us who have felt unaccepted, unacknowledged, I pray that today would be an encouragement. That what you see, the Lord, the way you work is the opposite. You're not to celebrate what we see, but you celebrate what we, what nobody sees. And for those, Father, who have been working in the background, day in and day out, on their, their relationship with you, their relationship with their family, their character, their forgiveness, their patience, their peace, their ability to love for those who have been working on this, Father, in the background, the things that nobody sees, Father. I pray, Lord, that they would be reminded today that you are satisfied, that you're a just God, and that you, it does not go unseen. Thank you. God, would you help us to commit this to our heart? That it wouldn't be something that we just learned today, but that we would believe, apply, and live out. That we would walk away today feeling encouraged, recognized by you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God is good, yes? Um, church online. God is good. We are going to go ahead and dismiss, and then when we are done, um, I want to uh, ask all the moms if we can just come up here in the front. We're going to pray, and then we have a gift for you. So Lord, we come before you. Let's all stand if we can for a moment. Lord, we, we come before you. We thank you for another beautiful service, another time to get together, and we just pray that you would bless all the moms today. We thank you for, for our mothers, and we ask that you would bless them, those who still have their mom and those who don't anymore. We pray, Lord, that you would be with them today as they uh, think about and, uh, their, their mom, Father. In Jesus' name, amen.